Hello everyone, let's talk about the law of sines. So we've used the Pythagorean theorem a million times and that is very useful if you have a right triangle. But what if you don't have a right triangle? Well, the law of sines and the law of cosines are basically extensions of the Pythagorean theorem and that's what we're going to use. So the first thing that we want to talk about is if it says the angles and one side, like you might not understand what I mean just yet, but when I, you, when I use the law of sines is when we have angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. So the information that you are given determines whether or not you can use the law of sines. And basically the way I remember this is if you have an angle side pair is when you're going to use the law of sines. And I'll show you when we actually do some examples. But the law of sines is just a formula. Uh, if you have the sine of an angle and you have the side opposite it, then you can set up a proportion. But you need to have the angle side pair. You need to have the angle and the side across from it. Now, you're not going to write an equation with two equal signs. It's always going to be like choose two of these things depending on what you're trying to solve. But the idea is the ratio between the sine of an angle and its side that is across from it is the same for any of the angle side pairs. So we're going to use that to basically solve triangles that we've never been able to solve. So let's try one. First thing, when I was saying angle side angle, what I mean is you have an angle and you have the side in between them. So this is angle side angle. Okay, that's the information that we're given. And when you know angle side angle, you know you're using the law of sines. So looking at the formula, it's the sine of the angle over the side. So let's look for what angle pair or angle side pair we know. We are looking for that. So I know I'm going to say something like the sine of 80 over, I'll just say little b equals the sine of, well, I know this side is 16, but how am I going to find that angle? The cool thing about knowing two angles in a right triangle or in a triangle is you actually know all three because you know that they have to add up to 180. So if I do 180 minus 80 minus 34 using some geometry rules, I can just say, well, first thing, this has to be 66 because the angles add up to 180. Now I have an angle side pair. The angle 66 and the side across from that is 16. So you'll notice I have a proportion and there's only one variable. Even though my sixes look like Bs, that's a B. Those are sixes. So to solve this, it's real easy. You cross multiply. So you would say B times the sine of 66 equals 16 times the sine of 80. And then the last thing you would do is divide both sides by the sine of 66. And this is very much calculator work. So we just cross multiply sine of 80 times 16 divided by the sine of 66. So let's use a calculator and we're going to do 16 times the sine of 80 and then we will divide by the sine of 66 and we will get, make sure you're in degrees, 17.25. It doesn't give me decimals. So we'll say 17.25. So this is 17.25. Now, you don't have a good way to really necessarily check this. You can type the, the ratio in and do it that way. But what I like to do just as a quick check is to say, if this is the biggest angle, then this should be the biggest side across from that. So just the two angle side pairs that we have, is that true? The biggest angle is across from the bigger side. 17 is bigger than 16 and 80 is bigger than 66. So that's usually a good like basic check are all the pairs do they make sense so i feel pretty good about that because i know my biggest angle is across from my biggest side and that's all i really needed to do was find that one missing side let's try another one so it says what information are you given well let's see <clears throat> we have an angle we don't know either of these then the next thing we know is an angle and then we know a side so this would be angle angle side and like i said before if you know two of the triangles, you really know all three. So if you wanted to like combine these ideas, really you could say angle, angle, side, angle. Like you can see how it's, you always have, if you have one, you always have the other because you always have all three uh, angles if you have two of them. So this adds up to uh, 85. That means that this has to be 95 because they have to add up to 180. Now I have an angle side pair right there and I'm trying to find this. So I'm going to use, well, actually I'm trying to find everything. So let's go ahead and set up a proportion. We'll find C first. The sine of 50 over 12. This is the angle side pair that I know. So I have to use that one equals 
the sine of 95 over C. So to solve that, you cross multiply 12 times the sine of 95 divided by the sine of 50. And you get 15.61. So C is 15.61. Now we'll do the same thing to find B. Sine of 50 over 12 equals sine of 35 over B. Now, you might say, well, why didn't I use that? I could have. It should come out the same. But if I have given information, I'm always going to use given information because I know it's correct. If I mess this up and then I use it to do the next side, then I'm going to get that side wrong too. So I like to always use given information if I have a choice. I'll use the stuff that they gave me and then like, eh, that maybe hopefully that's right. But it's not. I'm not going to miss both of them. So let's see. I got cross multiply here. 12. Oops. 12 times the sine of 35 <clears throat> divided by the sine of 50. And little b is 8.99. 8.99. B is 8.99. So we found little c is 15.61. Little b is 8.99. Now let's do what I said before. The biggest angle is 95. Is that the biggest side? Yes, that's good. The smallest angle is 35. Is that the smallest side? Yes, that's good. Okay, so I feel good about it. As long as your angle side pairs are in the right uh, order, that's usually a good sign. Let's see, what do we got here? Um, well, it looks to me like this is side angle side. Okay, so I see that and I'm like, S oh, that's not side angle side. I say SAS, that wasn't one of the ones that I said we use law of sines for. So you're like, oh, okay. How am I supposed to do this? That's a law of cosines problem. Actually, we are given the angles. You just have to remember that these are, if those are congruent, if they have the same legs, there's a word for that, same legs, uh, there's an E in there somewhere, isosceles. This is an isosceles triangle. So if these are the same legs, then these have to be the same angles. And I know that they have to add up to 150 because there's 30 degrees here. So these have to add up to 150, which means these are both 75 because the interior angles of a triangle add to 180. So now I actually have angle, angle, side. I could say angle, angle, side, or I could say angle, side. I'm going to just combine them because I think it's funny. You have all of it. You have a bunch of information. You have all the angles in one side. So you can do law of sines. Equation now help me. Uh, I'm trying to find one of the legs, so it really doesn't matter. I'm going to use the angle side pair I have, sine of 30 over 12 equals the sine of 75 over, I'll just call that, I guess I'll use little a. So I'm going to cross multiply. <clears throat> sine of 30, that's one half, that's on the unit circle. Sine of 30 divided by 12. Oh, no. So, uh, 12 times the sine of 75. So cross multiply 12 times the sine of 75 divided by the sine of 30. So that's the same thing as multiplying by 2. 23.18. So A is 23.18, which also means that little c is 23.18. So if I were to find the sides, I got them to 23.18, but I want the perimeter. So make sure you answer the right question. If I want the perimeter, I'm going to say double that because there's two of those legs, and I don't want to round. And then add the other side, which is 12, and I get 58.36. So the perimeter is 58.36. Perimeter is 58.36. And we're not given units, so I'm not going to. Uh, it's just units. It's a length. So we'll say units. That's fine. All right. So <clears throat> last thing, we'll do one that's sort of a word problem, and then I'll let you guys practice some. Uh, I gave you the picture. If I give you the picture, it's usually pretty easy. It's just like the other ones. If I don't give you the picture, it's a little bit more work. So the first thing we need is we have angle, side, angle. All right, I know I can use the law of sines, but I need to find the angle side pair. So I need this. So before I can do anything, I need to find my missing angle. So I'll do 180 minus 75 minus 60. And I get 45. That means that this is 45 degrees. So I have an angle side pair. I'll say the sine of 45 over 340 miles. We're talking about satellites. And what are we trying to find? How far is a satellite from LA? So that's this one, LA. So we're trying to find B. So it's the sine of 60 over 
little b. So now, last thing I'm going to do is cross multiply, and we'll wrap this up. 340 times the sine of 60. That's also on the unit circle. Divided by the sine of 45. That's on the unit circle. We get this one exactly. 416.41. B equals 416.41. Uh, 416.41 what? We're talking about miles? Okay, miles. So what's that mean? You have a satellite up in space. You know the angle of elevation from Phoenix. You know the angle from ele el angle of elevation from LA. And that means that you can find the distance of the satellite from LA, which is 416.41 miles. You've got a few practice problems. Make sure you go do those and then check them on Schoology. And that's all you got. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe.